Pick up your gear and open your chests. Throw on your armor and head out on a quest. Hey, hey, it's a brand new day. On the Sword Coast, the allies will help with blades and bows and magic as well. Hey, hey, heroes on their way. Fighting forever against overwhelming odds. Fighting together in favor of multiple gods. Idle champions of the forgotten realms. Idle champions, attention never ends. Idle champions, get you all out there. Idle champions. From water deep to Iceland Dale, head out the show, all shadow fell, hey, hey. Together we stay. Walk to the monsters, walk to the boss, walk to the right, it's never a loss, hey, hey. Bad guys to slay. Fighting forever against overwhelming odds. Fighting together in favor of multiple gods. I don't champions of the forgotten realms. I don't champions that you never lands. I don't champions that you want to dance. I don't champions. Hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of Garawar's Guide, the tutorial show. I'm Garawar. This is my show. Uh, with me, as always now, always and forever, now, I, I don't care what Martin says. Martin's like, well, I'm going to be here for now, but no, Martin's Martin's just my I'm working back scenes for me forever. Even if somebody else shows up, I'm just going to call him Martin. Uh, <laughs> Oh, uh, oh no, oh no, what happened? Oh no! Martin's like, this is my last show with you! No, 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 I'm just calling everybody Martin. I don't care who mods for me, they're just going to be called Martin from now on. <laughs> uh, today, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the Trials of Mount Tiamat and the Legendary Forge. Specifically, the more recent changes to those. Um, you know, the Forge is just is super new changes. Super, super new, like just a couple days ago. But I'm going to talk about it like I know what I'm talking about anyway. Uh, and, then, <laughs> and then the trials changes were a little while back. Uh, but I didn't want to do a revisit of these topics without being able to do them both together. So here we go. Here we go. <laughs> we are all called Martin for we are Legion. Yes, there we go. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Oh no. Uh, what have I done? Um, so, uh, if you've not been to a tutorial show before, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, an hour of me talking, uh, followed by an hour of me talking. Uh, but the first hour is me specifically talking about the topic that we're, that we're discussing. The second hour is me answering the questions that you've asked hopefully during the first hour or during the second hour so if you do have any questions about these topics um or any topics in idle champions uh in terms of gameplay mechanics etc uh the ch you know the champions that kind of stuff uh toss them into chat with the question thing down below it says question colon um yeah and then in that way martin can grab them out of chat uh and put them in this little document so that so that we don't lose them before the second half of the show. Before the second half of the show. <sighs> uh, 
this is my mod Martin. This is my other mod Martin. Yeah. <laughs> I am old enough to get that joke. Uh, uh, yes. Yes. All right. I'm going to try it. Yeah, we're going to, it's, it's Saturday folks. I had a donut for breakfast and some water. Uh, the sugar's getting to me. The sugar's getting, I don't do caffeine. So it's, it's the sugar rush that's making me like this. Um, okay. So first up, we're going to talk just about I, the forge doesn't exist without trials of Mount Tiamat. Let's just get that out there. Uh, from the beginning, these are, these are linked systems. These are linked systems. So let's, let's talk about the trials first. Uh, we're going to do a little of the basics and then we'll talk about the changes. So for anybody who hasn't, who hasn't reached Trials of Mount Tiamat, uh, well, the first thing you have to do is go through hell and back. Literally, you have to do Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. And what that means is you have to do, you know, the couple of adventures on the Sword Coast and then you have to dive down in here. Uh, you only need to do these base top level adventures. So you can, you can, you know, do hide complete. We don't need to see, well, it's hide complete isn't going to work. Uh, you, you don't need to worry about the variants underneath. You just need to do the top level adventures all the way up and around here and over here and then up to the top and around in the back and all the way back over here to El Terrell again. You're literally coming back to the same place. El Terrell has fallen is on the bottom left side. El Terrell's last stand is on the top right. This is the adventure you need to complete. You need to work your way all through Avernus. You need to complete El Terrell's last stand. When you do... This icon will show up at the bottom left of the banner over here. It's it's the mountain. It's the splody mountain that says Trials of Mount Tiamat on it. When you when you leave an adventure. So you complete, you complete this, you come back out. This is gonna show up, and when you click it, uh it will have it won't it won't say the some of this stuff. It will have a, a, a an adventure for you to do called the Mad God. Um it's a very straightforward adventure. Uh, it's not super challenging. If you completed uh, El Terrell's Last Stand, which is a challenging, uh, just base adventure on its own, uh, you'll be able to do the Mad God, no problem. And then it will bring you to this. This is the Trials of Mount Tiamat interface. Uh, you can, of course, access uh, Trials while you're... You can access the interface while you're inside of a run, but you can't start... Uh, you can't actually do the stuff if you're inside of a run. Uh, you have to leave. So, uh, this is Trials of Mount Tiamat. Uh, you'll see create a campaign. You'll see join a campaign. So, there's two ways to do this. Trials is a group adventure campaign. Uh, you need you need multiple people. You don't have to have them uh, ready. You can. You can have a group that wants to go uh, do trials with you. Or you can join a, a public lobby. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll show you. Like, here's, here's public lobbies. Um, we'll talk about what all these faces mean in a bit, but there are public lobbies with numbers of players. It's up to five people. Um, you can do, you can even do like the lower level, some of the lower levels, at least the first normal version you can do by yourself. Uh, there are 10 levels. There are 10 like difficulty levels or tiers as we tend to call them. Normal. It's just you versus, it's just you versus the world. Um, you know, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, there's no, there's no start cost. It just lets you create. What does that mean? It means like, if I come over here, there's a cost to start these adventures, but this is, they're just like, Hey, come do this thing. We're going to give you, we're going to give you some scales of Tiamat. We're going to give you uh, some chests that we don't tell you what it is. <sighs> this is a glory of Bahamut chest. I can't believe there's no, there's no tool tip. Uh, this is a glory of Bahamut chest. It has loot for you, but the uh, but eh, this is this is really what you're here for. You're here to go knock some scales off Tiamat. You want the scales uh, because the scales are what are the big reward. The scales are what you take to the forge and use to turn your gear into legendary gear. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, so there's, there's some fun buttons, uh, you know, once you get this to pop up, you're going to, you have to decide, do I want to, do I want to, do I want to host a campaign, uh, or do I want to, uh, or do I want to join a public one? There's options for, uh, this defaults to on, you could start the campaign when it is ready. What does this mean? That means once you have five people in there, 
it'll just automatically start, which is a fantastic uh, thing for those of us who, I mean, this is an idle game. You can't just start a campaign and then go, okay, how long, this isn't, this isn't, you know, some multiplayer game where there's hundreds of thousands of people waiting in for a new lobby to pop up. This is an idle game. It's just, you, you play this in the background a lot of the time. So you're just going to have to start the campaign and wait for people to join. And if you have this, it'll start, it'll start right up the moment you join, right? Uh, so this is nice to have on, uh, uh, create pirate campaign. So if I want to, if I want to create a, a, just something like a pre-made group, uh, I already have people like in a uh, discord who want to do a trial with me. Then I create a private campaign and we all hop in together. They join when they can. There's a code that it gives you. I'll show you for a moment. There's a code that it gives you campaign join code right over here. Uh, you can enter that in and it gives you all the information about how it's going to work. Um, I'm going to go ahead and abandon that. So people don't join. <laughs> don't. Uh, I'm just going to abandon it. So you, it doesn't, you, you, nothing's going to happen. Uh, so this is, this is, this is trials of Mount Tiamat. Uh, this is how you start a campaign. Once you're in a campaign, there's stuff to do. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, but ultimately what we're here for is the scales. So what you're doing is you're going, you're going uh, further and further. you you know, each difficulty tier is going to give you more rewards. The big rewards again, that you're looking for scales of Tiamat. So as it goes up and goes up and goes up, uh, you see scaling, you know, different levels. The health is the important part. It takes more and more health. Um, another important part is, is the higher the difficulty you go, the further you need to, to, to go in the adventure to complete it. Uh, so you start off with a normal, this is why, this is why a normal adventure is, is super easy. Uh, for the normal, you're really just like, uh, day one, cause this is a seven day thing. It runs for seven days or until you, until you, uh, defeat it. Uh, day one, you only have to reach area 100. That's your first goal, uh, to earn bonus DPS. What is bonus DPS? Well, you're trying to, when you come in here, you're trying to assault Tiamat and, and free Tiamat from kind of enslavement in a, in a sense. They, they've been driven mad by cultists and you're trying to help Tiamat. I know that sounds weird, but you're trying to help Tiamat return to Avernus, um, and get free of these cultists. Uh, and to do that, uh, Tiamat's going to have this giant, giant health bar that's at the bottom of the trials interface. Uh, I'd show it to you, but that would require me. This is one of the problems of doing a guide on this. It would require me actually starting one. And, and folks, once you start one, you can't get out. <laughs> you can't abandon it. Once you're in, you're in. Um, yeah, that would be bad. Uh so the way you take out Tiamat's health is by doing these missions. At, well, there's one a day, um, but also you push as far as you can in like your first day and you set a super high damage amount, which is based off like the damage you're doing in an adventure or your bud or, but it's, it's additive. So it could be higher than what you see your bud and yada, yada, yada. There's full explanations in my guide to, to Mount Tiamat on the subreddit. Uh, so each day though, you have to go further. You have to go 25 areas further than you did the day before to get your bonus DPS. But each day, the amount of bonus DPS goes up. So again, normal, you only have to get to area 100 on day one. By the time you get to a tier 10, you have to get to area 1000 on day one. It's up there. Uh, so as you're gaining power, you're able to progress through different tiers and you're able to earn more rewards. More rewards like in the terms of scales means more legendaries that you can craft in the forge or more upgrades for those legendaries. We'll get to that. Uh, so this is roughly what we're talking about when we're talking about uh, doing it to team up. But again, you know, one of the big indicators here, the health, the, the amount of health that you're going to be going through, not only do you have to push super far, you have to chew through a lot more health. So everybody has to contribute uh, well, most people, uh, most people have to contribute when you get to tier 10. 
uh, when I completed tier 10, uh, the last time three people were able to do, uh, over like, like significant amounts of damage and complete most of the days. Two people were only able to do a day or two. So even at tier 10, you can kind of be carried. Um, if, if somebody ends up with, with bad luck, what do we mean by bad luck? Trials, uh, every day, uh, has different restrictions that they impose on you. So, um, so it isn't just, oh, you've got to push in these adventures. Think of them like variants, uh, that have been working out. So, <laughs> so day one, you get a stat based formation restriction. So, like, uh, you can only use champions with strength 9 or greater, right? So you're, you're hit with a restriction on day 1. Day 2, hey, here's another restriction. The enemies get some kind of bonus. Like, oh, now enemies deal 400% more damage. It gets worse every day. It gets worse every day. Uh, so this is why day 1 is usually when you push super far to try to get as, as much as of a damage contribution as possible. Day two on, you just get to your, your daily goal and bail once you're done. Makes it real quick. Day two and on is real quick. Day one is the time investment. Day one and the time is the time investment. But you can end up uh, with stat restrictions of like Charisma 15 plus on top of all of these other restrictions. Or, you know, like maybe a maximum of three lawful champions and enemies now uh, come back to life after five seconds. And, you know, there's all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. Uh, again, check my guide to, to trials for all that information. Um, now, uh, as you'll notice, I have down here on the bottom, I have lesser blood vials, I have prismatic blood vials. These are uh, what you use to start the higher levels. So uh, if you'll notice, it says to create, I have to contribute a blood vial. Well, not only do I have to contribute one, but everybody that wants to join this campaign has to chip in one as well. Um, and as you get higher, uh, the amount you have to contribute goes up. The amount you contribute goes up. You can avoid contributing uh, like a large number of these by using a prismatic. Prismatics have been, I think they're still available in the cash shop, but they've been given away over time um, in major events. And basically they take the place of however many uh, blood vials you would have contributed. So instead of 14 lessers, I just contribute one prismatic. Uh, now, if, if we attempt this and, and we fail, we don't drive TM out of way, we don't get rid of the full health bar, I would lose uh, all of these lessers. However, if I used a prismatic, I'd get it refunded. So it does have a little bonus. There is a little bonus. Um, but to be honest, I just use the lessers um, for, for reasons. And the reasons being I have way more than than is reasonable. Um yeah, so uh, in these chests, you'll notice the number of chests, like not, not only do the number of scales that you get go up, but the number of chests you get goes up as well. Um, inside these chests are, are things that help you in your, in your trials run. There's all these scrolls that can give you bonuses. Uh, that's nice, but they only work in trials. Uh, there's also lesser blood vials. So you'll get a lesser blood vial card in each chest. It can be uh, anywhere from uh, common to epic, and, and a common one it gives you one, an uncommon gives you two blood vials, a rare gives you four, and an epic gives you 12. So getting the epic really, really ramps up your numbers. That's one of the reasons I ended up here. They changed, one of the things they changed, uh, it, what, since we're here to talk about the changes, one of the things they changed about Trials um, is the the uh, overall drop rate uh, and the amount of, of vials you get. So uh, if you got an epic before, it used to just give you eight, eight vials. Now it gives you 12. That's more, right? But on top of that, there is a better chance of getting that the, the epic drop uh, of the higher level drops. Um, a totally subjective, random... I uh, streamer luck. My my <laughs> my Discord would tell you I've been posting pictures. The last four runs I've done, I've gotten epic. I've gotten epic uh, drops. 
and one run I got two of them in the same run. So that's why I've just, for whatever reason, I've been lucky lately and I've gotten lots and lots of blood vials. But it can go the other way and, and you can run out and you can get low amounts and then you have to back off with your group or use a prismatic blood vial uh, because the idea is, is you want to push up to something that's sustainable in terms of earning the blood vials and getting a decent amount of scales. Uh, for my group right now, like to make sure that we can do it and, and it's, uh, easy. Like, it's not like we, we, we don't all have to like fret about, oh, did everybody do it? Did blah, 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 blah. We've just been farming Grandmaster. Solid amount of scales. Uh, we can boost that with a champion. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, and, uh, and we get a lot of blood vials for later. Right. Uh, so once you're in, uh, once you're in here, let's, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this private campaign. If people, if you join, that's fine, but I'm just going to end it. Uh, as you can see, you choose a different trial. Uh, there's five different places you can go. Each one has kind of a different, uh, set of enemies. Some are, you know, a little more annoying than others. Um, but all in all, every, you know, everybody's got to do something. Uh, they give you rewards the first time, the first and second time now that you complete that you banish Tiamat while doing each of these, you get a skin. You get a you get a special skin. First time around, uh, top to bottom, you get uh, Crawl and then Makos and then Torgar and then Avern and then Jarlax. So they all have Worm Speaker skins. This time around, we get uh, for the second time around now they just added these. You get Brunor, you get Warden, you get Celeste, you get Delina, and you get Jamila. So lots of new Worm Speaker skins that they just added. Well, five new Worm Speaker skins that they added. So it's neat that they're continuing uh, to expand on these Worm Speaker uh, skin line. Hopefully we get a lot more of them in the future. Um, when you're in here, you're going to choose uh, what champion you send, not to your trial, but to your the Assault Front. So you're creating what's called an Assault Front party. Uh, I refer to this as jury duty because it's trials, right? Because you go to jury duty and, and that, that, that champion that you send there is unavailable until you're done with your trial. Literally, you can't use them anywhere else. So you send them away and they give you a bonus to, to, to your, to, to what you, the rest of your party, all of your group are doing in trials. So there's things like, obviously, increase the damage of all champions. There's reduce base attack cooldowns. There's increase assault party damage. This is one of the two huge ones. And by huge, I mean super impactful. So Jarlaxle, lots of people uh, throw their Jarlaxle in because this takes that damage you're doing and those bonuses you're doing and multiplies it. Uh, so you kill Tiamat faster, right? You can do max health. Um, let's go down to the other good one. Makos. Makos is one of the people that increases the received scales of Tiamat. Makos is huge. So Makos is what, uh, my group, I will do Grandmaster because I can send my Makos. It's there. You, you can get a max of hundred percent. I'm over hundred percent. So we always get double scales when we beat Grandmaster. Now, uh, now if, if, if we were beating, well, see, hold on, I'm going to ban this. I'm going to go back to Grandmaster because I want to. So here's the thing. Uh, to beat Exalted Legend uh, 5377, I wouldn't be, I'd have to send my Jarlaxle. We wouldn't be able to max our scale contributions, right? So 5377, we come back to Grand Legend or Grandmaster. 3730, well, that's lower, but I know because I'm sending my Makos, I'm going to double that. So that means we're going to get uh, 7460 scales. So for us, it makes sense. This is the one that we can ease is, that we can beat the most easy uh, while uh, while sending while 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 getting double while getting double scales. That's something you're going to have to figure out with your groups or like your pre-made groups or whatever. But if you're going in and you're not sure. Like on the lower levels, absolutely just get your scales, like normal and whatever the first couple tiers are. You should be able to do those with a group. No problem. Even if some people aren't able to contribute, you should still smoke it. When you get up to the higher levels, someone probably needs to send a Jarlaxle and if if you can or, or maybe a couple. I'm not even maxed on my Jarlaxle. 
So you might need to send a couple, or you can use scrolls. There are assault party damage scrolls, so you can combine those. Uh, and then and then maybe the others send some you know, Makos and crew, because like, there's multiple people that do these bonuses. The bonus values, uh, just so you know, are entirely based off the item level of the champion, which is why you'll see the highest uh, numbers up here with these core and evergreen champions that I have for the most part. Um, because they have my highest item levels currently. Um, but remember, core and evergreens aren't necessarily champions you want to dump like blacksmithing contracts into. There are other champions that are down here that um, that can give those same kind of bonuses. Uh, and if you're going to dump item level blacksmithing contracts into it, do it, in, do it into one of those, maybe. 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 All right. Uh, so that's a rough explanation of trials what else changed we talked about uh the rewards some of the rewards changed so how many vials you get changed uh how how you start one the cost the costs all got changed it used to be that you paid a total amount one person paid the whole cost for the trial run now it's split amongst everyone which is fantastic uh everybody has to contribute uh, some of the other things that changed are the values, like each day, how far you have to go and how much bonus damage you have to do. It used to be that as long as everybody did day one, you didn't have to do any other days. That's not true anymore. Now, now for trials, you need to start your trial run, do day one, again, do a deep push, solid pushes on day one, maybe multiple if you need to, to really get, uh, all your gold maxed out and soft cap and do the most damage. And then you need to contribute. You need to come back every day and do your trial run. Uh, the The more days you do, the faster Tiamat is going to die. So even if... And the faster you're going to get your Assault Party champion back. So even if you... Uh, even if you know after day two that you've got more than enough damage to kill her off, keep, keep contributing the days. It's just going to be done faster. You'll just get your stuff back faster. You'll get your rewards faster. You'll still have to wait. Nowadays, the timer is about six days. It's not the full seven days. But if you can beat it inside of six days, then you can start sooner. Yay. Do that. Please. Everybody would like it if you did that. When everybody contributes, uh, it's that many, many hands make light work. When everybody contributes, you're done faster. You get your rewards faster. You can move on to do something else with the rest of your time, right? Uh, what else changed? They changed some of the stat restrictions. Um, I've got a full, actually for the first time ever, we have the full listing in my guide on the subreddit. Um, I don't know if I linked this. Here we go. Uh, you can also find it pinned in the official discord. Um, what else changed? What else changed? The rewards changed slightly. Uh, in general, I think everything kind of got, everything did get better. You do have to do a little more work now for your trials run. Uh, but now that we've seen the forge changes, it, in my opinion, it makes it worth it. So let's talk about the forge. Uh, we're going to need to, we're going to need to hop into something, something here. Let's, let's hop into Vecna lives. Let's hop into Vecna lives. I don't know what adventure. Okay. That's fine. They can push with this. So uh, when you're in a run, you have access to both the trials button. Once you've unlocked trials, it shows up here. If you haven't gotten that far, these two buttons don't exist for you. It's just a blank space. You're like, that looks like a smile missing some teeth. Uh, but, <laughs> but this is the trials button. Shows you the same thing, just so you can see. You can see, but you can't start your adventure from in there. You can create your campaign. Uh, and then the forge button is right here. And when you hover over it, uh, you get more information. The scales of Tiamat. This is how many scales I personally have right now. So this is how you, this is one of the ways you find out. Uh, uh, they're also, well, the, yeah, they also have it in your inventory. I feel like it doesn't need to be here. I feel like these don't, all of these could go away. <laughs> but but they're in here too. And if I, and if I like click on them, nothing happens. This is how you know, it's like, oh, it's, it just kind of exists. So this is the forge. Um, they didn't change the UI. I, fingers crossed, they do something with the UI. They do something with the UI. Um, because the UI is pretty, still pretty bad. Uh, but when you get in here, um, uh, you see you see your champions. 
these are all these are all there's no way to uh, there's currently no way to um to search for the champion you want uh there's no way to sort they're in uh what they call like i id item id order it's the order they were released so the most recent champions are going to be back here and the oldest champions are going to be up here you're just going to have to go hunting for them you see how many scales you have uh and it shows uh each of the individual items um now uh, it's gonna, you know, and there's some colors and there's some borders. Purple, you know, you should know means epic. You can only uh, forge a legendary piece of equipment uh, if it is epic already. So there's another reason for you to get like full epic on your champions that you want to, you know, get super duper power on. You need to be able to take an epic piece of equipment. Uh, you have to have it epic to turn it into le legendary. This is what it looks like when it's legendary. It's the it's the outer. Maybe I should demonstrate this on something that isn't. Do I have one here? This now there we go. It's the outer orange ish. Some people say golden. It's close. The inner is the gold, and the outer to me is orange. So the outer orangish color uh, tells you that it's a legendary item. Also, as you can see, the text is scrolling up, uh, and it even has a thing that says legendary effect. So, so here's the difference. Uh, a normal item is just going to say what its effect is. Reduces the cooldown of Bruner's ultimate attack by 45 seconds, right? A legendary is going to have that, plus underneath legendary. And then it has legendary bonuses. And in this case, this one increases the damage of all dwarf champions by a percent. And then it tells you what level it is. Okay, so this is giving us uh, multiple different pieces of information. One, when you make a legendary item, that epic effect still exists. Because technically, behind the scenes, this item is both epic and legendary at the same time. That means you can continue to level up the power of the epic item of the epic effect uh and the, so the the golden level at the top you can shiny it it can be shiny or golden or regular uh but that gilding the shiny the golden that only affects the epic effect so the base effect of the item and upping the item level only affects the base effect of the item the legendary effect is a completely separate function it's an added bonus and the only way you can upgrade the legendary effect, like you see I have level 5 here, is by upgrading it in the forge. Um, so, two separate two separate effects. If we come in here, we can see this is what the forge screen actually looks like. I have decided, oh, I want to forge uh, another legendary for Brunor. Uh, this is what the screen looks like. You'll be able to see, yes, it's epic. So, yes, you can forge it. You can see the current epic effect. And over here, you can see a list of the potential effects, legendary effects, that could land on that item. Um, you also see a cost for forging. Now, uh, the, this is one of the things that changed, and it is one of the wonderful things that changed. It's it's never been a better time to get you into a legendary. Uh <laughs> Here we go. This is my Stan impression. Um, legendary costs used to start at a thousand uh, scales, period. And when you forged one, the cost would double. So if you wanted to forge another, it cost even more. And then there would be this timer over here on the right. And every day it would reduce the, the cost a little bit. And it would take like six days for it to get back down to a, a decent value where you would then forge a new one. All that's gone. All that's gone for forging now. Super easy. Super inexpensive. You want to throw a legendary? You want to throw your first legendary onto a champion? 500 scales. Only 500 scales now. Uh, every legendary you want to add after that, the cost goes up 100. So... Uh, first one's 500, second one's 600, third one 700. I can see this because I have t I have two I have two legendaries. I have a legendary there and I have a legendary here. I don't have legendaries any others, so I have two legendaries on Brunor. That means it's going to cost me 700 to do the next one, 800 for the next one, 900 for the next one, a thousand for the final one. Okay, so total cost to fully legendary a champion now 4,500 scales. Uh, it used to be 6,000. And you used to have to wait a, a little over 6,000. You used to have to wait like six weeks. 
super, well, five weeks. Super annoying. Super annoying. Now you can just fully legendary out champions. In fact, Wednesday, when this change went through, I threw legendaries on, I threw full legendary on 33 champions. Because why not? <laughs> I actually have enough scales. I could fully legendary every champion in the game. I thought about it. I was super tempted. I was super tempted. Um, so the legendary costs, amazing. This change, amazing. Now keep in mind, these bonuses, their base bonus, fairly low. To increase the damage of all champions, 100%. Eh, fairly low, right? That's where we get into the upgrading part. Let me find, did I upgrade this one yet? No, sort of. Let me find a level one. There we go. So here's a level one. Uh, the level one effect, increase the damage of all champions by 20% for each champion with a constitution score of 11 or higher in the formation. That's the level one bonus. Over here I can see, uh, after I forged a legendary, I should explain this, after I forged a legendary, it gets assigned a favor to it. So Coralon's favor. What does this mean? Every time you go to upgrade, this only has to do with upgrades, it's going to cost you an order of magnitude of favor, EO1. Uh, that's This is the easiest way to look at it. It's going to cost you EO1 favor. It even represents it down here. You're going to go from 224. I'm going to go from 224 E56 to 224 E55 if I hit this button. Pretty straightforward. It's also going to cost me scales. Now there's there is a there's a uh, a chart. I have a chart in my guide. There's charts floating around in the. There was a chart in the blog. You start off. It's even cheaper. I can get you into a legendary upgrade for even cheaper than I got you into a legendary. Only four ninety nine right now. <laughs> Going from level one to level two only costs you four hundred and ninety nine scales. Fantastic. So for less scales than it used to cost you for a single legendary, $9.99 now, uh, you can have a level two legendary. What a deal! Only while supplies last. Uh, the supplies are going to last for ever though. Um, so, <laughs> but wait, there's more. Uh, now, every time I hit the button, this amount is going to go up a bit. Uh, it's a flat, it goes up in a flat value all the way up through level 10. You can only upgrade a legendary item now to level 20. They did institute a cap that is new. Uh, but for all the way through level 10, it's going to cost you another 153 scales each time. So 499, then 652, then 805, then 958. You see, it goes up 153 each time. Once you hit level 10, going to level 11 and on, it costs 152 each time. I'm not sure why the difference. I didn't make this. They did. Still, fairly uh, fairly straightforward in scaling. I will. I did a little math um, for myself. I'm going to share it here with you. Uh, if you want to, if you want to upgrade a legendary from level one to level ten, it only costs you 99.99. Slide right into a level ten legendary for 99.99. Uh, that's it. 9,999 scales. Uh, plus the initial, you know, 500 to buy it in the first place, right? To forge in the first place. Um, to go from 11 to 20, like to go from 10 to 20, it costs you over 25,000. So, you know, for me, you do you. For me, I'm, I'm going to, the reason I have scales left over and I only did 33 is I'm going to just start bumping all those up to level 10 and I'm going to call it a day. Now, what happens when you upgrade? When I hit this upgrade button, unlike with uh, you know going up item levels on on your epic effect, when you upgrade from level from level one to level two, uh, this effect this amount doubles. So it just straight up you go to level two and now it increases the damage of all champions by forty percent. You go to level three, it doubles again, and then it doubles again. So you can figure out you know what power you're going to end up with at the end because every time it's going to double. It's just a straight double. So what this means is it doesn't really make sense to uh, to necessarily upgrade one, you know, like different items more than others. There's no, there's no curve necessarily to figure out, unless, except for the bonuses. You can decide, like, do I want that bonus higher or not? Um, you're just going to be doubling the effect. You're just going to be double the effect over and over and over again. 
Um, so keep that in mind when you're upgrading. It's just a straight double. You can figure out what you're what you want to target. Like I want to target level ten, so I'm just going to try to go to ten on everything. You may, you may not have the scales for that, uh, but but I've got all those totals again uh, in in my guide. Uh, you can do the math ahead of time. Now you can do your math ahead of time. Now, uh, when you forge an item, I did say it is going to it is going to choose a random effect from this list. If you have never forged an item on the champion before, uh, it's going to pick one of these at random. There's six effects. You also have six items. What happens is when it's, let's say it marks this one off. You've done this. This gets you know now this one isn't available. You now have five potential effects. So when you do all six items, you will have one of these effects on each of those items. If you just if you just forged first and you didn't touch this button down here. Once you have applied every one of these effects to an item on a champion, they're all available again, but randomly. But randomly. So once you have seen all six effects, then every time you every time you hit reforge, you try to you just say I don't want this. If say I don't want con twenty percent, say I just want straight up uh, all champions one hundred percent because I don't want to worry about it. I hit reforge. It's gonna it's gonna roll it, it's gonna roll that that dice in the background, and I'm gonna get one of these effects at random. Now when I reforge. This goes back to the old system. This is the, it's going to take a lot of scales and it's going to take forever system. The cost starts at a thousand. And every time you hit reforge, the cost goes up like it doubles. And then they don't show a timer here, but it then goes down every, every 24 hours, which means unless you have lots and lots of scales to burn, on reforging, or you've chosen to burn lots and lots of scales on reforging, you're going to have to wait that like six day period for it to get to a reasonable cost again. Previously, the reasonable costs were uh, um, determined to be 1111, 1111 scales. So I have another day to wait before I would hit this, right? Um, yeah, it rerolls the bonus effect. And it rerolls the favor assigned. Uh, I think the worrying about the favor is just not not something you should worry about. Worry just about the effect. Get the effect you want. Uh, when you reforge, it will keep whatever levels it, it's at. So if I were to reforge Brunor's level 5, it rolls into a new effect, but it keeps the level. So you don't lose any progress. You're just changing the effect. Okay, so keep that in mind. Uh, overall, overall, these are the, these are the forge changes. Uh, they're pretty fantastic. Again, the costs gone way, way down, way, 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 way down. Um, makes it super easy. Again, I went through and I, I blinked out Delana, for instance, full legendary Delana. <laughs> Just because, uh, haters going to hate. I have a full legendary Delana now. Uh, but I have full legendary across like 33 champions that I chose to focus on first. Uh, there's a part of me that still wants to just fully legendary everything just to say it's done. Um, but I'm trying to fight that part of me. Um, yeah, again, hopefully we'll see, uh, some UI updates. Hopefully we'll see some UI updates. Uh, oh, so, uh, I want to mention, uh, I forgot to put this in the guide. Somebody reminded me and I haven't had time. Uh, when you go to upgrade this, like again, it's going to take uh, an order of magnitude of favor. So EO1. The best way to do this is to go into, to, to go, to decide who, who am I going to update uh, like, where do I want to focus upgrades? Like, is it, do you can decide, do you want to focus on a person? You can look and see how many, like, where are, where are most of their items? Like, let's see for Tyrol, we've got a Kelimvor, uh, we have Oral's favor. We have Oral's favor. 
Oral's favor. Hey, guess what? If I want to upgrade, you know, without even looking at the thing, the Oral's favor, if I want to upgrade Tyrell's legendaries, I need to head to Icewind Dale. Uh, because I'm going to be burning a lot of favor there, right? So you do a deep push as far as you can go. Uh, and you'll have, you now have some legendary power to go with it. If this is your first time, uh, you'll do a deep push as far as you can go. You should end up at this number of a favor or higher, like after some Azaka farming or higher because you, you upgraded, you got legendaries now, right? So maybe you'll have even more. Then at the end of your run, before you reset, upgrade the items that take Oral's favor. It doesn't have to even just to be on Tyrol. You could start with Tyrol, you could upgrade those, and then you could burn off some more favor on some other champions. Why? Because on that run, as you know, you'll have earned new favor. Again, you'll earn that much or more. So after you upgrade all that champions, you drop your favor all the way down. You were already done farming, so it's fine. It doesn't hurt anything. You reset. Well, now you got all this favor that shows up here again. So it's it's like an, it makes it an invisible cost. There is still a bit of a hurdle to jump through because every time you upgrade an item, it requires... Uh, a minimum amount of favor just for you to hold in that campaign to go higher. So starting off uh, level one, going from level one to two is real easy. It just means you need a minimum favor amount of uh, E10. E10. Every level it wants EO5 more. So by the time you get to level 10 and you want to go to get to and you want to upgrade to level 11, you need to have a minimum of E50 in that campaign. So if you had spit down upgrading and suddenly you're at E49 and you want to go from you want to upgrade an item from 9 to 10, you can't. Because even though you have plenty, you have E49 or you have 49 orders of magnitude you could spend. You need to hold, you need to have, be at E50 at that point to go. This this is in a chart in my guide, if this is confusing. This is yeah, weird stuff. Um, so it only matters as you start getting to super high amounts or if you're spending lots of favor. So you do want to plan out, uh, if you're going to be spending a lot in bulk like I am, you do want to plan out what level you're going to target. Uh, because you can't just... You don't want to just run one item up to 10 and then you go to do the another one and you only get it to four. That's not, doesn't do any good. That's not good for you. Like, because you spent way too much over here, you could raise them both together and get better effects, right? Cause they're all multipliers. Uh, in my opinion, in my opinion, you do you, but just keep in mind that you kind of want to plan that out uh, a little bit in advance before you go spending tons and tons and tons of scales. Um, yeah, I think that's good. I think we're going to go into questions early today. Again, the main point of this, uh, wasn't to explain everything about the trials in the forge. It was to talk uh, a bit about each of the change, the changes that came to each. So if you have more questions, you want to dig into trials or the forge specifically, throw them into chat. Uh, Martin's been grabbing questions already. We already got about a dozen. Um, yeah. And we'll be back momentarily. We're going to take a short musical interlude while I drink some water. Uh, I believe this is from Bardic Inspiration. This is uh, The Demon and the Witch. Hear the hideous laughter Cackling through the trees don't you know what she's after? Love's a cruel disease. Smell that fire and brimstone. Sail around through the sky. Prince, the demon of pleasure. Lust is in his eye. Choice not their wrong.
child of Babylon, Yanga, destroy all your dreams. The guise is otherworldly, she's never what she seems. Bound by evil, desire bound by strife, anger bound by hunger, lovers bound for life. Consort to the queen. Welcome back, everybody. I really like that song. I had to turn off captions so I could sing along. <laughs> uh, I did want to mention one thing while I was while I was gone. I was like, "Oh, I need to talk about it. some." Someone may have asked this question. Um, it is now. It was always kind of been better to just forge a new legendary rather than reforge one you already have. I want to be very clear, especially now that the costs are down, because reforging costs a, a lot. Uh, forging, not so much. So working your like just if if you get a, if you forge a legendary and you're like, oh, that's kind of garbage. I want a different effect. Forge a new one on that same champion. Forge a new one on that same champion. Now you could reforge it if you do. If you, if you only have one legendary on a champion and you decide, I'm just going to reforge this legendary, it's going to, it's, it's not going to go randomly off the list. It's going to pick from one of the ones that isn't that one. So until you have seen all six effects, it's going to work through them all uh, in, in random order, but it's going to work through them all. Once you've seen all six, then it's fully random. Hopefully that that explains all right we're gonna go into we're gonna go into the questions i'm gonna try to hit the ones that are somewhat on topic first somewhat on topic first uh Antalon, are time gates and trials of mount tiamat worth azaka farming um i don't think so no events are events are here's the difference in an event, every order of magnitude of favor you get gets you a 10% multiplier. What does that mean? So it means if uh, for for uh, for your regular campaign, uh, if you get E10 favor in an event, you get a 100% bonus to a regular campaign, which means it looks at a regular campaign number when you go to convert. Like say Torm here, 3.47 E76, 100%. That means I take 3.47 E76 and I add it to 3.47 E76. I get an I, I, I get the, the percentage multiplier added back to that campaign. Um in a time gate or trials amount Tiamat, 
instead of being a uh, instead of EO1 being a 10% modifier, it is a 2.5% modifier. So it is four times worse in its conversion rate, which means I would need to get that same 100% bonus. Oh no, now I've committed to doing math on stream. I would have to get to E40 favor. I would have to get to E40 favor instead of E10 favor. I think that works out right mathematically. We're going to go with it. You understand my meaning, I hope. Um, so because it's harder to get, because you're not getting as much in return for your time investment, and, and it is a time investment, usually a potion investment, I don't usually bother in trials or or time gates. Um, in a time gate, usually what you're trying to get is those first three gold chests that it offers, right? I already did my free one for this weekend. Um, but... But when you go in, you're going to get, you know, you click on the champion, it's going to give you two adventures uh, and a variant, and you're guaranteed three chests along with the champion if you don't own the champion. And then you'll get uh, X amount of silvers, where silvers is based off how far, how many unique 100 levels you pushed uh, in, the, in the thing. So if we come over here, you'll see I did a rosy time gate. I got my three gold chests, uh, and I got seven silver chests, and then I bailed. And I took whatever low favor conversion I had, and that was fine. That was fine for me. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't uh, farm favor there. You can, if you want. Just know it takes a lot more uh, to get the same amount. You're going to get a lot less. You're going to get, you know, from your normal push. You're going to get four times less than what you might get in an event. Usually events are where you're going to do, you're going to really work to get a good solid chunk of favor if you're trying to really multiply or boost a, a main campaign. Uh, in Trials, specifically, because Trials, again, Trials converts like a time gate, um, the the point in Trials is, is, is less about earning favor. It's more about, I mean, you want to get a, a certain amount of favor. You want to get a certain amount of gold. Ultimately, what you're trying to do is hit this upgrade soft cap, circle through the line through it, so that you know your champions are at their most powerful during a run, so you can uh, set the highest damage bonus possible. Uh, so your, your favor is only helpful in getting you to that point. Beyond that, it's not really, a, it's not as big of a deal, um, because you're not trying to, I mean, unless you're well, yeah. it's not. I don't. I don't find it as big of a deal. Usually, you're just pushing through with a formation and your formation power to get through trials. There have been people that have tried click debuff and stuff, and you know, there are lots of here's here's what I'll say. There are lots of armored uh, uh, bosses. Uh, good good luck. Just <laughs> yeah, um, and especially nowadays with all of these legendaries. Your pushing power with your formation is going to be pretty fantastic. Pretty fantastic. Uh, uh, and get even better as you upgrade it, right? So, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend uh, trying to Azaka farm in those places. Uh, Road Rope. When should we go for Trials as a new player? As soon as possible, after achieving a certain progress to a certain... Or reaching a certain progress level. Uh, I mean... Uh, so I, I recommend, I have a, a, a new player guide. I recommend uh, like efficient progress by setting it by the milestones I've represented in there. And it's basically you're, you're dipping campaign to campaign. So by the time you finish Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus, if you can finish, if you can beat El Terrell's Last Stand, just the base adventure, you're ready for trials. If you can't, you're not. And you can't get there anyway because... <laughs> Because you didn't beat El Terrell's last stand. So it's pretty. It's a pretty straightforward thing. If you can beat El Terrell's last stand, yes, you can hop into Trials. Granted, you might be doing uh, the first... Stuck in the first one, two, or three tiers of difficulty at first. But you're still getting scales. You're still getting legendary items. And as you get more legendary items, you have more power and you're able to push further. And now, with these changes... Like before, we would... Oh, well, we got into Trials. I did a normal run. Great. I have a legendary item now. Not anymore. Now you're going to have multiple. So it's going to be much easier to progress. 
it's going to be much easier to progress through the game after that point because you're going to be getting so much more power now out of the legendaries from trials uh i'm really i'm really excited for people uh ricardo so if i send a champ to the assault front jury duty and then decide to open a time gate for that champion and get a variant with it as a required champion do i break the game yeah it, it wouldn't they probably wouldn't let you start it you can't use that champion for anything so when they're when they're on jury duty when they're on the assault front party you can't use them for anything if they show they're going to show up in patron challenges they're gonna show up in patron challenges uh, and you can't, you just can't do those challenges <laughs> until you're done. This is another reason to finish your trials as quickly as possible. Once you're done, then you can use it again. Um, but yeah, there are certain things that are, that, you know, people send somebody away and then they need it for something. And it's like, well, guess what? It's not available. Yeah. How do I join a campaign? Uh, so uh, if you, if, if somebody has started uh, a public lobby, uh, these colors are represent uh, the difficulty levels. You just kind of have to learn them. I don't think that was probably the best idea. Making it color coded, they probably just should have said the level over here. But you know, uh, you'll learn what it is. Uh, they won't. Sh anything you don't qualify for won't show up. Uh, so like you can select through, and you'll see Grandmaster, uh, Legend, Normal. Here's a Normal, right? Uh, then you just hit the join button down at the bottom. Then you just hit the join button down at the bottom uh, and, and go for it. Now you can also, if, if you have a group, if you've set up a private group and they've shared their code for you with you, you can type it right down here into the box on the left and then hit join. And then hit join. Uh, Shake Mugen, I have three E05 scales. Is it worth it to try to get all my champions to legendary? Uh, I don't know why I haven't talked about that. Uh, hmm. Here's the, I see. This is what I asked myself. I'm like, could I do it? Yeah. Should I do it? Hmm. So here's the thing. There are 112 champions in the game. Um, three EO five scales isn't going to get you there. So maybe that helps you with your maybe that helps you with your uh, with your math. Uh, to go full legendary on every champion in the game, if, if from zero, this is from zero, you'd have to do your own math if you already have a bunch. Uh, it takes 504,000 scales. 504,000 scales. Um, for 112 champions. Uh, and remember, they're adding a champion, well, Wednesday. Every three weeks, there's a new champion. Um,. So three, unless you already have a bunch of legendaries, uh, you know, having 300,000 doesn't necessarily get that would, that would get you 66 champions. Um, but it wouldn't get you any upgrades. So that's kind of what I did originally as I looked at, well, what I went through my list, I made a spreadsheet because you can't use, you can't use, uh, the in game UI at all to help figure this out. I had to make a spreadsheet with the names of all 112 champions. And then I, and I did some magic and, and I figured out, okay, well, who do I want to fully legendary? And I went through and I'm like, who do I use almost all the time? Like if they're first off, if they're available, who are my go-to 10 champions? Full legendary. And then, okay. When, when this DPS isn't available because the supports are usually flexible and I'll use, with multiple DPS, who are like my, who are the, 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 who are the DPS that I lean on the most? Uh, you know, what's my order of operations for like, what would the next DPS I want be? What would the next one? And then I, I and then I have full legendary a bunch of different DPS. And then I'm like, well, if the, each of these support champions is gone, who are their backups? And then I legendary, then I end up with about 33 champions that I use in roughly a lot that's in in most situations now is that going to be everyone no um but <clears throat> that kind of legendary power you know I should have multiple people in just about any adventure hopefully now with full legendary which will help contribute to my power right 
Um, so I think with with three EO five with three EO five scales, I think you're going to want to figure out who your your core pushing group, especially the ones that are if you haven't if you're not farming uh, the tier ten of trials, maybe especially the ones that you lean on in trials, because the further you push, the more scales you're going to earn every week. Um, that might be a good idea, right? Sultanius, how does one unlock Trials of Mount Tiamat? Uh, so we covered that, but it, it's basically you have to finish uh, the very last adventure in Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. It's called El Tarol's Last Stand. If you can complete that adventure, you don't need to complete any of the variants in Avernus. Just work your way through the winding basic adventure storyline. Uh, if you can complete that adventure, you unlock Trials. Uh, do, 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 do. General Walker, any solid options to go for effects? I'm assuming on legendaries. It depends. Every champion has their own unique effect. Uh, set of effect. Well, not unique, I should say. But every champion has six effects that are based off that specific champion. So it doesn't matter which doesn't matter which item you click on. It's the effects are based off the champion, not on the item. So you can put them anywhere. But each champion is going to have uh, different sets. Um, I tried to put this all in one guide, all the different bonuses. Reddit got mad at me. They're like, you can't put this much text in a single guide. Uh, so now all of the, you can find all the effects for each champion um, in, uh, well, in the guides I have updated recently for champions, which I've, I've updated like most. I've updated most of the guides for champions on the subreddit. Uh, but yeah, you have to look at each champion to determine what, what the effects are. And then it just depends because it isn't always like there isn't, I don't feel like there's always a best because sometimes, well, there's one that's really good, generally speaking, but then there are others that could be good in the right situation, like with the right formation and, hmm. Hmm. oh, Shank, no, 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 no. I mean, uh, the further you push in terms of the tier, not, not in trials, in terms of the tier the further you push through the tiers, tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four, all the way up to tier 10. So the further you push in the tiers, you want to be able to farm, you want to be able to farm tier 10 uh, and have enough damage in your team where you're using your Makos, you're maxing out your scales bonus with like a Makos. Uh, and that means you are pushing deeper. That means you're pushing to like area a thousand on day one and 11 to 25 or 11 50 or somewhere around there on day seven or 11 somewhere up there somewhere up there with all the restrictions you have to have a lot of power to do that folks you have to have a lot of power so the more the more power you have the the easier it is for you it's going to be for you to to effectively farm scales to create more power it's a nice little feedback loop uh, road does reforge cost scale based on legendary level? Um, it, it, it's based on, <sighs> here's, here's my problem. I have never reforged anything. So I have to go based off, uh, other people's explanations. Um, it's, it should just be based off how many times you've hit the button or, and, or, how long you've waited for the cost to go back down. Uh, I don't want to hit this button because I know it's, it's inefficient way to spend my scales, um, but that's what it should. That's what it should cost. That's what it should cost. Uh, hold on. There's also a fact. When is this anything about reforging? Uh, yeah, it's reduced 10% of the cost increases drastically with each force reduces 10%. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all it says. Yeah, so I I don't deal with the reforge because honestly I feel like until you have uh, the legendaries you want, and honestly I feel like even then it's you know you've upgraded the ones that you want to upgrade, uh, then reforging is an inefficient way. It feels like an inefficient until a certain point. It feels like an inefficient way to spend your scales. Uh, Spila, once you reforge six times, no, once you forge six times, you can get duplicate effects on the effects on the same character. One, yes, sort of. Once you've seen the effect, every effect, well, I know this is somewhat confusing, whether you've forged six unique items and thus have seen all unique effects, 
or you've forged one item and reforged five more times, as long as you've seen the all the effects that are available on that champion, it will then just be random and you can get duplicates. And you can get duplicates. That's what people are shooting for when they're reforging, is to try to get duplicates of the ones that they think are the best. Um, it's just going to, like I said, it's going to take a long time. It's going to take a long time. Um, do, 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 do. All right. Uh, Honda Hero, if you're going to forge all six items for a champion, what is the advantage of reforging? Getting duplicates of the effect, of the desired effect. Yeah. So it's not that it's not you can that you can only get you can only ever have one of each of those effects. That would make no sense at all uh, for this system. It's you can you can get duplicates. It's just you have to you have to ultimately you're gonna have to reforge to get there. Uh, all right, I saw a question in chat that didn't have question in front of it. Folks, if you want me to ask answer the question, you have to put question and colon in front of it or Martin doesn't grab it. Avonid, is it possible to get to doing tier 10 on your own? No. I, um, unless you're doing things that probably aren't cons you know considered generally acceptable uh i'm gonna say no the amount of damage that you need is a lot you need a lot of damage like i said for us to clear uh tier 10 uh it took uh three of us doing significant numbers of days of contribution and two, doing a, you know, a couple days worth of contribution. It took a significant amount of, of group damage uh, to do that. To do that. Um, so probably not. Now, that being said, I mean, unless you're just trying to go for completionist and get all the achievements, you don't have to get there. Again, you earn scales at lower levels. You're just, you'll earn them slower. But you earn the same scales. Uh, and so you can upgrade your legendaries the same way. It's just you're not gonna you're not gonna get the achievements for it. Uh, again, folks, uh, please put question colon like I just put in chat in front of your questions. So Martin grabs them. Uh, I'm gonna go back to general questions. General questions. We don't have a lot of questions, folks. I've got we've got like 45 minutes left, folks. Please, Give me, otherwise I'm going to have to do uh, my one-man re reenactment of Justin's one-man reenactment of something. And nobody wants to see that. <laughs> uh, General Walker, what's the best way to get high amounts of favor? I can barely get around E20. Um, so there's a, I mean, this tells me you're n a newer in the game and that's fine uh the amount of favor that's considered high is gonna is gonna be subjective to each individual person um and it's a, it's a it's a combination of things uh one you need to have a very a strong as strong a group as you can put forth to push as deep as you can right that's the, that's 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 step one step two is uh if you really want to get a lot if you really want to generate high amounts of favor you need to unlock a Zaka Stormfang. She's a slot 12 champion. She's an evergreen champion. She doesn't normally wear a, a cowboy hat, but she does for me. Because this is Farmer Zaka. Uh, you want to unlock a Zaka Stormfang in Tomb of Annihilation. I've got a guide for that. She's an evergreen champion. She is uh, gets referred to as the Favor Fountain or the, the, or the Favor Farmer. That's why she has a farmer skin. Um, there is a manipulative form of gameplay called Azaka farming that requires you to push as deep as you can. Uh, then on a boss level, you manipulate things. This is the manipulative part so that you only end up with one enemy left on the screen, not a ranged enemy, a may one melee enemy left on the screen. 
and you kind of uh, move it away or freeze it, or maybe you made it a crystal sphere or something, and and then you swap out your damage team for a gold find team. So you go from like a damage pushing team like I have here, sort of, we're going to call this a damage pushing team, with E80% gold find going on. Uh, if I swap in a gold find team, I could probably have a hunt E100, closer to E100% gold find showing up. And this is how you generate lots of gold because you've already pushed super far and now you're manipulating the game so that you can boost your gold find up super high. And then when Azaka's ultimate goes off, it attacks the enemy and causes them to drop gold as if they were killed. We call it bullying them for their lunch money. So you're generating the same amount of gold as you would if you killed something, but you're not killing it. So you're able to farm it over and over and over and earn lots of gold. This is uh, generally seen as the way to uh, really unlock uh, potential to earn a lot of favor. Now, early on, when you first unlock Azaka, she might only get you, uh, you know, like if you got to uh, E37 on, a, on the run, just pushing deep, she might get you to E39, E40, because maybe you just don't have a lot of gold find champions yet. It happens. Uh, later on, she, you know, so she might only give you an EO2, EO3 bonus to whatever you had already earned, and you're going to be like, well, that doesn't matter. But it, early on, that does. That's still a significant boost compared to what you have. Right? Um, and to what you were getting. Orders of magnitude are big deals. Um, you're adding a zero onto the end of everything. So that's like going from 100,000 to a million. That's kind of a big deal. But you'd be going to, from 100,000 to 10 million or 100 million. Right? So getting even two or three more orders of magnitude of favor with Azaka is a big deal. Later on, when you're more like me, you can run up and get like any from E8 to E12 more uh, added to the end of your thing with Azaka farming. So learning Azaka farming early, even if it's only going to get you an extra EO2 or EO3 more favor at the end of your run, this is going to be one of the things that you're doing over and over and over in the game and learn to do. Um, and it's going to help you push. It's going to help you uh, generate more favor overall, but it's also going to help you push further faster, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I don't, this being said, when you're brand new, I don't even recommend necessarily Azaka farming right away. I don't think you need it. Uh, I don't think you even need to truly Azaka farm until you hit Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. That campaign is rough. It's one of what we call uh, like the hard campaigns currently. It's it's where it's where things go from somewhat. Yeah, it's kind of, you know, everything kind of feels like it's scaling pretty normally. And then you're like, what just happened? Uh, the blessings cost way more to buy. You need way more favor than you've ever thought about before to get the ball. And Azaka farming starts coming in big there, as does, you know, working on your patrons and getting all of these other forms of power to help you push deeper other than just favor. But, but ultimately, uh, combinations of pushing deep and Azaka farming at the end uh, are, are how people generate large amounts of favor. Uh, and yes, as Warmir just says, uh, don't worry, uh, they've played the game without Azaka farming once. Yeah, you never have to do it. You can just push deep for favor repeatedly. That works too. It's going to be a little slower, but that's okay. Still, you can still do it. You can still do it. It's totally fine. Uh, Azera Death, uh, what adventure gives Maestra favor for Time Gates? Time Gates. Time Gates give Maestra's favor. That's it. Uh, when you open a Time Gate and you do a run, you generate Maestra's favor. When you close that Time Gate, it forces you to convert Maestra's favor immediately. You don't get to keep Maestra's favor. There's no blessings to buy. It's, it's just related to that Time Gate and doing that Time Gate, and then it goes away. Well, then you convert it. Uh, similar with, uh, Tiamat's favor. That's, that's just, um, oh, not Tiamat's. Bahamut's. It's, it's Bahamut's. Bahamut's favor. Uh, is, is for, is for trials. I think. Whatever. Anyway, the trials favor goes away the same way. Uh, <laughs> and there's like Winter's favor. You can see here down at the bottom. Winter's favor is your season. 
That's the that's the that's why it's called winter's favor. We're currently in the winter season. See? It's called season 2 the flare hunters, but we're currently in the winter season. Guess what season 3 is going to be, folks? Spring. Spoilers. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. <laughs> now watch them change it just to f with me, right? Nope, we're going to make Garwar wrong. No, but that's yeah. That's that's what we've been doing, folks. That's what we've been doing. Uh, Rodru, I rely on Jahir a lot as my main DPS. So do I. Do you think that she will still be good even after the current season? Yeah. Here's the thing. I haven't um I haven't chosen I haven't bought any of the boosts to Jahira. Uh and my Jahira is my best DPS. Um Jahira was one of my best DPS before this season. She got better. She got better. They moved her to slot nine. That instantly made her better because now she gets to be used with Bayloth. And before she was in the same slot, so couldn't be. So Jahira is an even better DPS than before. Um, so yeah, you're going to be fine. Paul, should you save blacksmith contracts until full epic? Ooh, this is the, this is an immortal question. It lives forever. Everybody likes to ask this. Um, I mean, like most questions, it, it depends. Um, personally, I do don't feel like there's a lot of reason in general to put blacksmithing contracts on someone until they're full epic. The reason for that is the hunt for full epic. I, I, I personally like to keep uh, my power levels roughly the same. I call it a power floor for the lowest power champions. I try to keep them roughly the same so that um, all of my champions can contribute but I do that based off them being full epic because I'm at the point in my progress where everyone's full epic. Um, so it's diff it's difficult. If you're on a new player account, you're going to have a hopefully at least a minimum blue with some epic spattered about. Um, I don't th I think maybe I, when you get to that point, you can make a decision on your own. Just know that like early on, the best place to put your items or your blacksmithing contracts are speed champions, specifically Briv and Human. Uh, those two, arguably about which order to go in first, I recommend a little bit of Human first and then a little bit of Briv and then more Human and then more Briv. Um, uh, and then maybe followed by Virgil. And I mean, there's... there's Speed champions are where I are where if I were going to start a new account, I would invest my item levels first. But I would be very careful about dumping too much into them before they were epic. Uh, I would try to get good speed because basically that's going to get me through adventures faster. If I pause in gem farm, it's going to earn me more gems and more gems. All of these things get me more gems faster. And then those gems go into gold. I buy gold chests with them and then guess it gets me more blacksmithing contracts. Then I upgrade their levels more. There's this snowball effect that happens when you do this to, to speed champions. That's not the same uh, necessarily as with just upping power levels. Um, I mean, you still want to do that, but... Uh, but it, it isn't the same. You don't see the same return on investment as you do a speed champion. So it's a difficult question to answer. You kind of just take the, take the knowledge that these are the things that you want to think about and then make a decision about how you want to go forward. Just remember never the, the big rule of thumb is please don't ever, if you've done it before, everybody makes mistakes, but please don't now, now, you know, better, uh, please don't put blacksmithing contracts on your core or evergreen champions. They don't need it. They're going to get thousands of item levels just from you opening regular silver and gold chests. Um, they don't need you to put blacksmithing contracts on them. So when we saw my Brunor that was at like uh, seven or 7,000, like he's got over 8,000 on these items. I've never put a blacksmith contract on him once. All I've done is open chests for five and a half years. Lanan, any thought on a functional cap for Whittle? Well, she already has a functional cap. Do you mean a literal cap? 
I'm going to treat this as if you ask me what are my what are my thoughts on literally capping Whittle's speed effect. I think it'd be great. I think it'd be great. Uh, here's why. Uh, Whittle, if folks, if you don't know, Whittle is a, is a speed champion. Um, and she has an effect that uh, increases the spawn speed of, of enemies. Deacon has that same effect. Melf uh, has that as one of Melf's uh, three effects. Uh, potential three effects. So there are multiple champions with this effect. The thing is, Whittle, Whittle has an item that scales. It's Tasty Friends. Uh, and ways to manipulate the number. Um, and uh, there is a functional cap for how fast you can make an enemy spawn. And that functional cap is one animation frame. One animation frame varies from computer to computer, so there's no way to know what the actual, uh, what, what, what level do I even need to get Whittle's item to? Who knows? So I think they should just give it a, pick a number and cap it, uh, like in an effect power and cap it, uh, so that, so that they support the use of other champions like that, like Deacon and Melf and any other champions they want to give that effect to later on. Um, and then people aren't, and then also people just won't be confused. Like, well, did I cap it yet? Have I? I don't know. How do I know? There is no way to know. Well, great. Right. I don't like that type of feeling for people. Uh, granny surprise. This sounds like a, uh, something you bake. Sorry, but I'm, I'm newer. I'm newer, but I love the game. Don't apologize for being new. We were all new once. Uh, welcome. Uh, glad you're enjoying it. Can you explain the season pass, please? Sure. Um, so, uh, the seasons, this is only season two, so everything's still kind of new and stuff. Seasons have quests, and they also have rewards. And as part of the rewards uh, pass, there is a, there is a free-to-play path, which, uh, which grants you, like, uh, four rewards from each of the tiers that you can buy, and then the other, the other uh, rewards in the tier require you to buy a season pass. Season pass is ten bucks U.S. dollars. You know, translated to your own, I don't know what that is where you live. Um, but yeah, it's it's so so getting the season pass unlocks the potential for all of these other uh, things on the on kind of over here. Most of the stuff over here. Uh, it varies to whether it's like these four or maybe it's these four or eh, that needs to be clear. Uh, but yeah, so you can, you can get some stuff down the left side. And then when you get down here, you can spend any excess currency you have on one of these three items here, uh, contract packs, uh, potion packs, or just gold chests. Don't, don't, don't do this one, this one. <laughs> Um, this is, these are just to burn off any excess tokens you have after you've dumped everything into this. So the season pass is going to offer you, uh, potentially more, what you might find to be more valuable things like, Hey, here's a golden, here's a legendary, excuse me. Here's a legendary potion. Uh, here's a, a feet. Here's a skin. So they put what they think are super valuable stuff over here on the right hand side. Uh, and then you have to decide, do I want to pay 10 bucks to get access to all that stuff? Just, just remember you have to, uh, and that's kind of subjective to you. I think it's the best 10 bucks you can spend on the game personally after five and a half years of seeing what they sell. But I say that from a position of knowing that I can work my, I've already worked my way through all 10 tiers and I'm about to unlock tier 11 so I know I can access everything and I know I can generate lots of currency to buy things. Um, so what part of the decision uh, about like buying a season pass is because the season pass just doesn't just automatically get you more currency or anything. It doesn't. Um, it just gets you access to other rewards if you can do the work to earn them. So if you play enough that, you know, you can get these quests done, like your dailies or the big, the big source of experience and currency comes from your dailies, uh, and, and the sets that they drop once a week that stick around forever. And then the milestones, if you know, you can put a lot of time into this or effort into this, 
over the whatever number of days are left in the season. We only have 32 days left uh, out of a 70 day season. So we're over halfway through. Then $10 is could be worth it for you. Um, if you don't, if you play more casually and, and completing this kind of stuff, like maybe once or twice a week, uh, completing this kind of stuff is just not, is you can do some, but, uh, and you can probably work your way down, but the $10 may not be worth it for you because you may not end up, uh, you may only end up a few tiers down. In that case, you have to do a little, a little bit more judgment about whether or not, you know, the stuff in the first three tiers is worth $10 for you, right? Um, so yeah, it is a bit subjective on, on it, but that's how the season pass work. It's just grants you access to the stuff on the right hand side and that's it. That's it. It just grants you access to more rewards. It doesn't give them to you automatically. Uh, Jerevan, is there a way to know what level you need to get to earn more favor? Oh, so generally speaking, if you've been to that level and, and, uh, before, uh, you're, you're like on your previous run. If you then do another run and you're at the same level, you'll earn a little more favor because you earned favor last time. So your gold find bonus is higher this time. You learned a little more, but probably not a lot. The idea is to, if, is if you can push further, you're going to earn more favor. If you're no longer able to push to a deeper level and every time you do a deep push, you end up on the same level. You're not going to keep earning a lot. You're not your your favor generation is going to go down a lot, even with Azaka. Um, so it's it's like, what level do you need to? I don't know, just further than where you were before. Further than where you were before, and you hit some kind of deeper multiplier on the gold that's dropped. Because every time you go another level, go, more gold drops, more gold drops, more gold drops, more gold drops. This is why building a party that pushes deeper is better than just building a party that gives a lot of gold find because the one that pushes deeper is going to end up with bigger gold drop multipliers that make it earn more favor most of the time. Shake Mugen, how to push past the final boss when it has segmented shields. So armored, so when it has armor. So there are times where you run into a boss. Have we seen an armored boss in this run? I don't know. No, there's not going to be armored bosses. This is Vecna lives. An armored boss is going to have segmented health. It's going to have little health chunks, and then there will be a little shield on it. What that means is you need to do a minimum amount of damage to even remove one segment. That amount of damage varies. You need to either hover over the boss to get the health total or hit D to have health total show up as default, like now they're doing. And then there's usually 50 segments, so you divide that health total by 50. Uh, I mean, a zero is going to remove an order of magnitude, and then you can divide by five. Oh, here is one. Here's kind of one. Yeah, this is one. So this would be uh, divided by 50. I would need uh, E193. It'd need, it'd, be, it'd need roughly like four E192 damage each hit. So that needs to be what my, my DPS is putting out. That's how you have to figure it out. You just have to figure out how much damage you need to do. Um, and it's and it's in one hit. The idea behind armored bosses is that uh, you can't just hit it once and it's dead. You have to survive, too. You have to survive long enough to hit it 50 times. Now, if you have a multi-hit champion, maybe it's less than 50 times. But if you have a single target champion... You gotta survive long enough to hit it 50 times with enough damage on each hit to remove a segment. Wow, we got a lot of questions. This is great. All right. Getting serious. Uh Graydon, any advice for completing the Neris Spiritual Weapon seasonal quest? Yeah. Uh there's a guide for that. I didn't make it. Uh if you search on the subreddit uh a couple weeks back. Human123 made a guide that I personally use. There's multiple guides out there. I can only speak to this one. I have completed that spiritual, uh, that nearest spiritual weapon quest, obviously. Um, I use that as the base for building out my own formation. I tweaked it a little bit. Uh, if you go back to a GG2E a couple weeks ago, the week that quest came out, um, about 57, 58 minutes in, 
I pull up uh, that guide and I build out a formation. And then for the rest of the hour, I'm tweaking it and adjusting it and setting that up. Um, so my tips are to go back and find that. But basic, basically, it requires uh, uh, you need Neris, uh, you need a DPS, you need a, you need a tank. These are usually good things uh, to keep in mind. Uh, I did some, I think, some speed shenanigans, and uh, and I focused the deep, you know, on the DPS. But I didn't level, I didn't level everybody up as far as I could. I leveled up in a very controlled manner, just to get the spiritual weapon stuff going off and some other things. And then the DPS I over leveled, and I made sure the DPS was doing like e ten more damage than everybody else. That way I knew the DPS was going to be the one getting the kills and they're going to have the, the spiritual weapon. And then I got to a level where they were the only one that could kill. And then just, and, and I, and, and you'll see in the video, I even tweaked my levels sometimes a little bit. Oh, Maelstrom's helping GG 2 E one forty six. Uh, it should be like 57, 58 minutes in. Um, and then once I got it set up so that it was so that every kill was getting uh, credit, then I, then it's speed potion time. And then you wait. Now, at the time, Finn was bugged uh, and she was helping it with get credit. I ended up finishing it in like maybe two or three hours. Uh, so it's still going to take like eight to 12, probably. Um, but that's how you do it. Ad admittedly, it's one of those that honestly you could just ignore. I swear, I swear, folks, it's okay to completely ignore a seasonal quest. Um, they're worth 200 XP and 900 currency. Well, guess what? That's that's the same as two dailies. <laughs> so, um, you know, effort versus reward, not there. Just not there. It's okay to not do it. Uh, RCP, uh, seasonal quests are hard. Uh, yeah. Neris is, yeah. Jahira's Fierce Hunter. Mm, I didn't have as big a problem as that. Viconia's Undead. Mm, I didn't have an issue with that. I'm trying to understand how to push them. I don't, so, so Neris is, I just discussed. The others, uh, so I built a formation. This is a modified version of my formation. I build a season formation that, that's gonna have the champions that I need in it. Uh, and at night when I go to bed, I turn them on. Uh, sometimes when I'm awake, I'll, I'll, I'll have it, I'll have it running. If I'm not gem farming like this, I'll, I'll have it just churning through and they get done for me. Um, now Jahira's, you have to, you have to progress through levels. You can't sit on a level and farm it. I will tell you that that's the tip. You can't just sit on a single level and farm fierce hunter. You just have to have her in your formation and be pushing and doing and doing like pushing, you know, somewhat deep. I, I do a higher, I, I usually use this 652 reset like this that I use for my gem farm for this. And, and it got done. They all got done that way, except for Neris's. So I would say try to push a little past your click wall uh, before you reset and, it sh and you should get there. Uh, El Palajo, uh, Gar, remember you had a steam guide with your favorite formations for each campaign and event? No, I did not. No, I did not. Uh, do you have any intention of updating the guide? No, it wasn't mine. Uh, uh, that was not my guide. That was not my guide. Uh, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't do that. What I do in my, in my champion guides is I put, uh, I put starter formations for all of their, uh, for, for each champion to do their event with a starter, like a pure starter with, uh, with just core champion core, like, and hitch who's a, who's a core of green. Uh, and then the second one is like what to do to push deeper, but again, uses like core, mostly core champions. Um, I have never done one with, uh, with like meta champions or anything. I stay away from that because I personally adhere to, you can play this game however you want to play it with whatever group you want to play it with. It just, maybe it's going to be a little, maybe it's going to be a little, uh, more efficient or less efficient. And I don't even like, if, if you've ever, if you ever drop by my stream, Twitch TV slash Garwar on Mondays and Wednesdays, uh, I, I stream idle champions. Uh, and on Mondays we're usually doing patron stuff. 
and you'll see like my way of doing patron stuff is, well, I hop into the variant and then I just bench by bench. I go through hmm, who looks like the best for this that's available. And I don't have preset stuff. I just wing it most of the time. Um, and I see how far it goes. And if I need to change it because we're not done yet, then I start getting into optimizing stuff. But yeah, so I've never made a guide like that. Uh, but I know what you're talking about, and I don't think that person plays the game anymore. So it's probably not getting updated. Uh, that's... Again, somebody asked what adventure gives Meister favor. None. It's just time gates. It's just time gates. That's that's a time gate thing. We answered that before. Uh, you have to do a time gate, and then once you close your time gate, that favor goes away. Uh, Ultima Hiru are champions that are now time gate only worth trying to gear up in comparison to those that aren't. Well, yeah. Here's the thing, folks. Um, if it is not that champion's event, it is equally hard to level up uh, to, or to gear up a champion, uh, a, a, an event champion. Well, if, if it's not their current event... Only when it is their current event is it easier to gear up that champion via doing the event than by running time gates or opening patron chests. But the rest of the time, you have to either run time gates or open patron chests to gear up to get epics, to get epics specifically. Because to get to blue, you're just popping them sweet, sweet electrum chests that, that streams like this give you um, uh, over time, like, you know. If you didn't get it during an event, that's that's how you could get it real easy without doing time gates. Um, just because a champion is what the community calls retired doesn't mean it's easier to get non-retired champions gear. Because if it's not their current event, if it could be up to a year before you see that event again, that doesn't that's not easy. That's not easy. If that's the champion you want gear on. You want to gear them up now. That means t time gates or opening patron chests. A combination of both is the best. Um, so don't... Uh, this focus people put on, oh, that champion's retired and you better... Oh, meh, whatever. Gear up the champions you care about. Focus your time and energy on the champions you're using and or, and or are gonna use. Don't put this stress on, well, who's retired and who's not and blah, 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 because none of that matters. Uh, you have three ways to gear it to get full epic on champions. If their event is active, you can use that. Otherwise, time gates and patrons. And most of the time you're you're alternating. You're using a combination of these two. So, yeah, I know that I know people put a lot of focus for some reason. I don't understand on on who's retired, but it doesn't matter. Uh, reruns. I have some leftover legendary potions from the Heroes of Rose season. Nice. Since the scales cost for each level has gone down since then, how are they best spent? Well, wherever you... Oh, okay. Make an epic item legendary uh, or increase in level on a legendary. Uh, I mean, so if you have a level one legendary, it's when you apply it, you can't... If you apply it to another level one legendary, nothing happens. It, it doesn't additively work. But if you have, like, like I have this level three legendary potion somewhere there it is uh if i apply this to a level one legendary item what happens is that item becomes level three and i get refunded a level one legendary potion a higher value will take the place of a lower value and refund you the lower value that's how it works um but there is value in your question because now if you have level one uh, legendary, po I don't know what level you didn't say, but if you have a level one legendary potion, it is more efficient to spend that on a champion that has maybe that has multiple legendaries than one that doesn't have any. Because one that doesn't have any is only going to cost 500 for that first legendary, then 600, then 700. Uh, using a level one potion is actually most efficient when you're put it to put the sixth and final legendary on a champion because that one would cost you a thousand. But it's yeah, they're best used on, on champions now that have multiple already because you're because the cost to get those, you know, those final legendaries is more expensive. 
I hope that made sense. Made sense to me, but... Hmm. The Mole's Revenge. Being a fairly linear thinking person who's trying to follow the stories, I tend to try to complete one campaign before starting the next. I'm making the game hard for myself by doing this. Only if you stop and try to do all of Sword Coast. The game was not built for you to start off in Sword Coast and try to get all the way through that campaign. In fact, Sword Coast campaign doesn't end. It is an endless campaign. Um, you do Sword Coast for a bit, then you bounce to Tomb of Annihilation. And I, I find unlocking Dritzt and getting your, your second uh, Global Blessing in Sword Coast, once you have those two, bounce to Tomb. Then, uh, then you do the campaigns roughly in order, but you occasionally come back because this is how the content was added. You occasionally bounce back to Sword Coast to grab some more stuff. Like you'll bounce back to Sword Coast to, to get Strahd as a patron. After that, you don't necessarily have to come back for a while, but, but at some point you'll bounce back and you'll do Sword Coast. Just remember, Sword Coast told stories in little bursts. So you can finish through the stories... Uh, but, but you want, you, but each of the campaigns, yes, do at least their adventure arcs in order as you're pushing through because they're getting progressively, progressively harder. You're going to unlock, uh, more, more favor, more blessings. Those blessings are going to help you do the next one. They'll help you come back to a place like Sword Coast and push further, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, as long as you're not trying to complete Sword Coast, uh, first, cause that's just not, it's not how the game was made. <laughs> Uh, Bifido, what's the theory behind saving blacksmithy contracts until full epic? Uh, so on your hunt to full epic, you're going to get lots of duplicates and, and duplicates and thus lots of item levels. So that champion may, my argument is that champion could be, could end up really strong just on the hunt for the full epics without you needing to put, uh, uh, blacksmithy contracts in them. And most champions don't need a lot of uh, item level power, uh, the hunt to full epic could get, could, you could get to full epic and, and they're going to be average item levels in the 130 to 160 range. And once you get, uh, over like average item level a hundred, they're solid. Um, the only ones that truly need lots of items, the main ones that need truly need lots of item levels are speed champions that have an item that scales with those item levels. Or those mathematically broken champions like Artemis and Kron, but I don't, I, even I don't really, I don't bother with those. I put item loves other places. Uh, King Mufasa, just jump into the stream, and a newer player is only gold epic. What are purple? No, purple is epic. Purple is epic. Um, this is, this is epic. The, that purple outer, this is a purple outer border for anybody with uh, color, um, vision uh, issues. This is a purple outer border, but you can also tell at the top left, there's four hash marks. There's four darker hash marks. That means it's epic. And in the middle, you can see that there's a gem with six smaller gems, three on each side rating out. That means it's epic. Uh, these are the indicators of epic. Uh, this is legendary. So five hash marks on the top left and orange. Uh, I, I think that's orange to me, orange golden. Um, and then there's, oops, and then there's uh, eight small jewels outside of a hexagonal jewel, whereas this was, um, I guess it's a hexagonal, well. is that it's just at a different angle. Or is that, arc? no, that's octagonal. Octagonal jewel, this is a hexagonal jewel. I don't know, anyway, there's, multi there's three indicators on each card as to what would be, what would be. So epic is the purple with the four hash marks. Legendary is orange with five hash marks and, and jewel stuff. And jewel stuff. And if you want to see the others, like, so white, one hash mark, a lonely jewel in the middle. Green, uncommon, uh, this is common, uncommon, two hash marks, two jewels on a triangle. Blue, rare, three hash marks, uh, four little jewels off a square. Right. Uh, but just remember, legendaries are technically, I know this is confusing, legendaries are technically epic and legendary at the same time. 
Guadonalas, I uh, recently started transferring all my event favor into Torm's favor, and when I do a deep push into Sword Coast, I can't get to the point where I see more than one for Pacific Favor. That's what happens when you go all in like that, yeah. In this situation, would you recommend reforging legendaries that are linked to my Torm's favor? I'd like to avoid losing several orgers of magnitude my Torm's. So, mm -hmm. um, again, you, you want to push as deep as possible before you start foraging, but yeah, if you can't push far... If doing a deep push doesn't get you a whole lot, that's fine. Do the deep push, then not reforge, but forge legendaries or upgrade legendaries. Again, I don't think reforging is a thing to do anytime soon. Uh, forge and upgrade uh, to drop that down, then reset your adventure. You'll have your favor back. You don't have to burn off favor. Uh, Freeman, do you have any non-core evergreen champions with as much of an item level as Briv? Oh, uh, oh, non-core? No. Uh, Human's only in like the 1800s and Virgil's in like the 1985. So yeah, Briv would be my highest non-core. Non-core, non-evergreen. Because so, there's no reason to put that much power in anyone else. Unless you fall into the I want to Artemis Kron uh, black hole. I don't, I don't. Silly Simon, other than using Baldur's Gate champs, who ranks high in your go-to list to support you? Oh, I don't even I don't necessarily use Baldur's Gate champions uh, to support you here. I just use whatever my meta supports are. Um, I have been using Crydal in combination with Briv to do duo tank pushes. Uh, I think Crydal is super strong tank. But beyond that, I'm using whatever's in the like whatever the meta strong champions are that are available to me, like uh, or Kira and Averin and yeah, I mean, you know where I'm going, right? Like it's the names everybody knows. Uh, Befito, with the fact that there is a max speed of one max, uh, speed of spawning champions of one animation frame, how do speed potions and general game speed from the core and Shandy affect this both for attack frame, uh, and monster pawning? I don't know. That's a good question that the devs could uh, answer in a speed blog. Maybe ask for them for one on Dev Insights. <laughs> I may have been asking. I've been asking for one of those for a year. Oh, boy, Martin. I don't think we're going to answer all these questions. I'm doing real fast. On slot seven, uh, El Palajo, is Human still better than Tatiana for speed? Human will always be better than Tatiana for speed because Tatiana is not a speed champion. You have to wait 15 seconds for her to spawn more enemies. That's not speed. Uh... DVS Cuban, I believe you've answered this in the past. Which order should I open a chest to maximize the gear for champs? For event champions, uh, Electrums, then name chests, then gold chests. Yes, this is the lightning round, folks. Anthelon, did scales become a better buy than Modron chest from tier 11? In my opinion, yes. Uh, Azera Death, uh, is there a season pass for DLCs? No, only for the seasons. Uh, Wolf Spain, everybody talks about a Zaka farming. Could you explain, show us new players how to do that? Nope. I know you have a written guide. I do not have a written guide for Zaka farming, but I do have a, a video guide to Zaka farming. You can find it on the CNE Games YouTube channel, and maybe Martin can link it. Maybe. Nuno, now that he's been officially revealed, what are your initial thoughts on Brother Uriah? Uriah. Uh, interesting? Uh, we'll have to see their scaling. Uh, Nord Detrox, I suddenly started getting silver coins dropping from mobs. Is this a bonus from one of the champions? Yes. It indicates that you're getting more champ, more gold. Like one of your champions is increasing the amount of gold drop that drops off monsters. It shows up as that, uh, platinum coin is what it is. Bill Slowski, did they fix the link for Brother Uriah Red? If you click it, it takes you to the fin page. I don't know. I just go straight to the codename blog. Uh, Paltz, can you turn off auto progress and background party for Zorbu Farm? Yes. Uh, it's in the settings, uh, settings, um, uh, is it under general? Always auto progress while offline. Cause offline is background. That's the same exact thing. So turn that off. Conspicuous compiler. Gar, remember you once had a magnificent stream volcano of steam volcano of doom. It's my humidifier. Do you have any plans to return it to the stream? No, it sits over there. It always distracted people. Uh, you can see it in super, super old videos. Uh, Granny Surprise, what are the best speed champions for newer players? Who do you get first, second, etc.? Ooh, it really depends. Uh, the two best speed champions of the game are Briv and Human, but they need a lot of item level investment. Uh, Shandy and Deacon are great uh, right out of the gate because they don't use items at all. They just use feats to boost things. 
Um, so it, you kind of grab whatever you can grab, uh, whatever's available early, uh, and works for your progress towards split the party. Uh, people in the community can help you with what that means. Frodru, is there, oh, I'm doing good. Is there any, cho is there any other way to generate time gate pieces much faster? Buy them with cash from a wild offer. That's it. Uh, I already have one patron unlocked and have the last Kelimvor's blessing. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's every five days for them to drop off a boss. It's the normal generation. And then you could buy one from each patron each week. So working towards unlocking more patrons is going to help you out. But otherwise, cash is the only answer. Uh, Black game over. I recently turned after multiple years away. Welcome back. I hope you did not delete all your newsletters. I hope you were signed up for the newsletter. If you can find them somewhere in your email, all those codes still work. Enjoy. In the last two weeks, I've unlocked all the patrons of the trials and still have all the campaigns after Avernus to explore. It's a bit overwhelming. Is there an area of the game I should focus on progressing? Um, you've unlocked all the patrons and trials. Great. Just make sure you're doing your trials every week. Make sure you're doing your patron uh, challenges every week. Uh, if you've if you completed through Baldur's Gate, move on to Icewind Dale. That's next in the line. You just work your way through. You just work your way through and unlock the evergreens. And then, you know, whatever you want after that. Robotech, does the legendary potion refund apply to all levels? If I apply a level, example, if I apply a level, a uh, legendary level six to a gear that has level legendary three, do I get a refund as a level three? Yes, that's how it works. Whatever, if you apply a higher legendary potion to a lower, the higher number takes precedent and you get refunded the lower to put somewhere else. They do not add up. They do not add up. It's always going to replace and refund. Uh, Garg, for the time get requirements, 50, 75, 75, 100, 125, is there a max? No, there is not. That's why usually uh, it goes up every time you choose it. It comes back down every time you don't choose it. At least that's supposed to how, how it's supposed to work. So usually if you're going to be farming time gate champions, you pick three. Rotating through the three keeps them all at 50, 75 by the time you get back to them. Shake Mugen, what happens if I put a level eight legendary potion on a champion with six level one legendaries? Uh, well, on whatever item you put it on, suddenly they have five level one legendaries and then a level eight, and then you have a level one potion to put somewhere else. You'd have to find a new champion. Question, what is your favorite pet? I don't have any pets. Uh, <laughs> I finished it, Martin. I finished it. I did it. That was 50 questions today. Most of them done, um, in the last 30 minutes. Uh, most of them done in a lot. A huge chunk of them done in the last five minutes. Uh, folks, thank you for joining me for today's Gar War Guide. Uh, the CNE streams are over for the weekend. Um, however, I, if you like hanging out with me, if you want to hang out, I do a stream in about an hour uh, over on my channel, Twitch TV slash Gar War, spelled like it sounds. Um, uh, oh, God. I almost said it's. Final Fantasy Friday. No, it's Final Fantasy Saturday. Saturday starts with an F. We're playing Final Fantasy VI. We're playing Final Fantasy VI. Come hang out with us. Uh, but follow me in general. Again, I, I stream Idol Champions. I answer questions for on Mondays and Wednesdays. Uh, but I also stream other games. Uh, what are we? What song are we going out on? Uh, Kobolds are number one. Have a great weekend, everybody. are really tough. Kobolds will steal your stuff. Kobolds we like to sing. Kobolds will take your things. Kobolds live underground. Kobolds we run around. Kobolds we like the dark. Kobolds don't need no art. We may be small. We may be last. But we are many and we're coming fast. So hide all your gold and pack up your tools. We'll stop on your toes and steal all your Kobolds were not that short. Kobolds were in your port. Kobolds come from dragons. Kobolds train your flagons. Kobolds deserve the praise. Kobolds are really great. We may be small, we may be last. But we are many and we're coming fast. So hide all your gold and pack up your tools. We'll stop on your toes and steal all your tools.
like the best. Go bold, smart, and impressed. Go bold, tight in your group. We go bold, stack tall and huge. We may be small, we may be last. Words. Go bold, our super fun. 